I tend to look at racism these days as kind of like speed bump, okay? It's not a hard and fast barrier. You can go around racism these days, and then if it's so obvious, you've got mechanisms to go adjudicate it you know, in courts or EEOC or something like that. So let me move on to my next question. You said something that uh, racism today is more systemic racism and is more a benign neglect. But from that Pew research, 68% of Black people say discrimination is the main reason Black people cannot get ahead in the U.S. So how do you square this with your statement that racism is more benign neglect and this whooping statistic that I is don't, the main reason why Black people cannot I don't, get ahead uh, in America? I don't square it because I don't agree. I don't agree that racism is, I mean, it can, it's not outside of the realm of possibility. If someone came up and said, oh, hey, I didn't get this job because they didn't want a black guy doing it. In the US, no one is going to go, what? No way. The first thing they're going to ask you is, are you sure? Can you prove it? I don't agree. I don't agree with 68% of the black population that racism holds you back. I think that's not my experience. I think it's there, but I don't, I, I, I tend to look at racism these days as kind of like a speed bump. Okay. It's not a hard and fast barrier. You can go around racism these days. And then if it's so obvious, you've got mechanisms to go adjudicate it in courts or EEOC or something like that. So I don't agree that racism is that big a factor. I wouldn't be one of the 68%. Mm. So in your mind, how big of a problem is racism today for Black people in America? It's something, it's something you should be aware of. But I mean, it's, you know, when I put on a suit and tie and go down to the interview for the job, I mean, I assume I'm going to get it. I'm not flipping a coin looking for racist undertones during the interview. <clears throat> I just assume I'm as viable as any other candidate. And in your experience, you've always gotten it. Well, I mean, I, I've interviewed for jobs and not gotten them, but I've had some pretty decent jobs in my life. So it's not been my experience. And who knows? Maybe I didn't get the job because of, you know, something of that, but I got another job. I mean, would Sometimes. you really want to work there if that was the case? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, they, they might have they might have done they might have done me a favor. <laughs> right. let, let, let me ask you this question, Stanley. Do you think that the belief that racism is a systemic issue is more of a psychological in, uh, hindrance? to racialized black uh, financial growth than it is no. an actual systemic, like an actual overt systemically racist institution? Uh, I think it can be an impediment if you're carrying that chip on your shoulder. The way the wealth gaps and stuff like that work, the systemic racism is carryover from Jim Crow roughly ended 57 years ago. I, I was born in 1965. So the bottom line is the systemic part is we didn't start at the, you know, the same finish line that other populations did. Okay, it's not, it's, systemic racism doesn't have to be active. It can be something that's passive. We did not start at the same starting line as other parts, other groups in America did. So that's the systemic uh, problem. Well, you I, know, I and, and, and basically, basically to catch up, you would literally have to take an anti-racism approach. If racism caused the problem in the first place, taking positive action to correct the problem would be an anti-racist Indian approach. Now, you may agree with that. You may not agree with it. But that, the bottom line is that would be how Kendi does it. The systemic part is basically starting 10 yards back from the rest of the non-Black people in America. Mm -hmm.